Good morning, gang. Happy Thursday. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, as the interesting stuff keeps rolling in everything, uh, I got an interesting email from Ray Honor the other day, and uh, there was, you know, he sent me a few different things. There was one in there that was worthwhile. You know, I mean, there was a lot of stuff in there that was worthwhile, but there was one that caught my interest and thought it would make an interesting video. Okay. And it was something that said, you got to hand it to Washington, D.C. And I read that. That was just a short little blurb, and I kind of extrapolated on it a little bit and found some details and things like that that I thought you might be interested in. Okay. But, you know, it kind of goes like this. So, like I said, you got to hand it to Washington, D.C., you know, primarily the Democrats, but I'm going to trust me, I'm not absolving the GOP here at all. OK, there's plenty of blame to share. OK, they're all proving that history repeats itself. The funny part is this. They've brought back the 1918 pandemic, the 1929 depression, the 1968 riots, the 1973 gas shortages, the 2002 housing bubble, the 2007 food price crisis and the 2008 debt crisis all at once. Congratulations, guys. You have managed to do the impossible. Okay. So if you want to see, kind of go through this stuff, okay, and how all of this is just insane here. All right. Go back to 1918. By the time three waves of the Spanish flu swept across the globe in 2018, 29, or I'm sorry, 1918 and 1919, okay, at least 50 million people worldwide were dead including 675,000 Americans. Now, in comparison, COVID has been responsible for 4.3 million deaths across the world versus 50 million, okay? But 619 deaths in the United States so far, according to the CDC. I know what y'all are going to say. I'm just saying, okay? Now, if you think about this, we have similar numbers now as we did in 1918 in the United States, but the rest of the world has about 10% of the numbers they had in 1918. And yes, I know that the population of the world was significantly less in 1918 than it is in 2021, but numbers are numbers, okay? This tells you how bad our government is failing the people, period, okay? Then you get the 1929 depression. All right. We all know quite a bit about this. On Black Tuesday in 1929, the stock market dropped 12%. Okay. After the crash, the Dow continued sliding for three more years. Finally bottom on July 8th, 1932, closing at 4122. Okay. Mind you, you know where we are now. All right. All told, the market lost almost 90% of its value since its high on September 3rd, 1929. But in fact, we didn't reach that high again for 25 years. We finally got back to the, the 1929 high on November 23rd, 1954. Okay, think about that. If you would have bought something on September 3rd, 1929, you would have had to wait 25 years till 1954 to get your money back, to break even. Okay, we're not, not even talking about inflation or spending power or anything like that. Okay. Now, we haven't seen the market crash yet, but about every economist out there says we're in another bubble like we were in 1987 with junk bonds, or 2000 with the dot-com bubble, or 2008 with the housing market, okay? Now, imagine, when the Fed is done printing money, okay, you know, we're going to have another crash like the Depression. Pretty much everybody will agree with that. If we have another 90% drop, that puts the Dow back at 3,500, and the S&P at 450. We haven't seen those numbers since 1993. Gee, how many years is that? Nearly 30, okay? You know, in 1993, just to give you a little context to this one, the average wage of an American was $22,191, and a new house cost 80,900 bucks, okay? $22,191 right now is just above poverty poverty level now. And 80900 bucks might find you a mobile home, okay, or manufactured home or something like that. Might, okay, and probably not with the land. 
So go to 1968, okay? The next place I want to compare to. We had four days of riots in Washington, D.C., in Chicago, and in Baltimore following the killing of a black man by a white man. Yeah, MLK was shot by James Earl Ray, okay? In 2020... We had riots in Minneapolis, Portland, Seattle, God knows many other cities, okay, following the killing of another black man, George Floyd, who I wouldn't quite put on the same level as Martin Luther King, okay, by another white man, Derek Chauvin, okay. Our politicians this time, you know, offered to pay the bail and set up defense funds for the rioters, you know, as they destroyed $2 billion in pro uh, property of people that had nothing to do with the killing. But, you know, hey, let's burn down a city, okay? Fast forward to 1973, we had a gas shortage. OPEC puts the squeeze on the United States and gas goes from 29 cents to 55 cents a gallon, a 90% increase. Now, since the beginning of 2021, January 1st, gas prices were $2.33. Here it is, October 12th, or I'm sorry, August 12th, and gas prices have risen 40% to $3.26. That's in eight months. If we see $4, like a lot of people, including this guy, have said all year, that would be a 72% price hike. Remember when the U.S. was uh, energy independent? Last year? Thanks, Joe. So we go to the 2002 housing bubble, when anyone could buy a house just by agreeing to pay the mortgage. Of course, rates were low because everyone was getting variable rate mortgages and financing themselves up to their teeth, okay? And when rates went up, boom, foreclosures abound and the banks all of a sudden owned a whole bunch of houses, okay? Sound kind of familiar? 34% of the American population lives in rental properties today, okay? 11 million of them are behind in their rent, which also means a lot of those landowners are potentially behind in their mortgages, property taxes, whatever would be on those properties, okay? Then also don't forget all the homeowners who have been on some sort of forbearance or whatever, you know, and they haven't been paying their mortgage. Now, granted, that just got tacked on to the end, but, you know, again, still the same issue. They're going, they're going like this on, you know, trying to pay the bills. If the economy doesn't come back quickly, we're going to see another housing crash similar to 2008, okay? We all know BlackRock is out there buying up houses at a meteoric pace, and guess what? When you lose your house, they'll gladly rent it right back to you, okay? Of course, that means you'll never own it, and you just have to be careful where you put, you know, holes in the walls when you're hanging pictures of your little grandson Timmy's, you know, t-ball game, how about 2007, the food crisis, okay? In 2007, the average world prices for rice went up by 217%, wheat by 136%, corn by 125%, soybeans by 107%. Those prices wound up our new normal until 2020. And y'all don't need me to tell you where food prices have gone in the last eight months. Finally, the 2008 debt crisis, this, again, was caused by the housing crisis as the government was busy bailing out all those companies that were too big to fail, even though some of them did anyway. You know, and if you all remember back then, they helped everybody out with their stimmy checks of 300 bucks. Okay. Where I was, which was in northern Indiana at the time, okay, we saw 17% unemployment. Yeah, I lost my house, was going through a d divorce, lost my job, whole nine yards with all of that. Okay. Go back then. I mean, and mind you, this is only 13 years ago. We were six point, the country was $6.4 trillion in debt. We're now $28.6 trillion. And your government is looking to add another $3.5 trillion real soon. Forbes magazine predicts that the U.S. debt is going to be $89 trillion by 2029, which would put our debt to GDP ratio at 277%. And you wonder where Agenda 2030 comes from. Hmm, okay. You know, how is a Great Reset going to be accomplished? Every country, not just the U.S., is doing everything it can to completely blow up the way of life for its citizens. Financially, morally, economically, racially, you name it. Okay. 
These are the freaking people running the world. And by that, I mean running the world into oblivion. Okay, This is what we're preparing for because this is our future. If you're in another country outside the United States, a lot of this applies to you too because you know a lot, many countries are dependent on a strong United States. I just hope it doesn't take an event from, oh, I don't know, 1914, 1939, 1950, 1965, 1991, 2003, to get us, all of us, out of this mess. Have a good Thursday. Been well out.